Thank you, sir. Thank you for this opportunity to speak on this forum. So I'm going to talk on the pediatric trigger thumb evaluation and video demonstrations. So pediatric trigger thumb is the condition uh, for the, uh, I think uh, most of the orthopedic surgeons may have encountered this kind of problems when the kid's born and they are after a after few years, they are not able to extend the thumb and they have the deformity, flexion deformity of the thumb. So this is a pediatric trigger thumb basically. So initially it was told, uh, it was told that as a congenital trigger thumb, but there's a lot of uh, studies which shows that no any, not even a single child was born with the flexion deformity or the trigger thumb problem since birth. So the, the term congenital trigger thumb had changed to the pediatric trigger thumb because this is acquired and the developmental. So this kind of patients presently present with the painful catching and the popping of their peel tendon during the extension of the thumb. And we should not forget to see the other hand of the patients because they're on 25% of the children's, they have bilateral involvement. And there's a palpable nodule at the base of thumb, basically at the metacarpophalangeal joint, where what we say that that is the notas nodule, this is the sine qua non of the trigger thumb. And there's, there's a lot of controversies about the natural history, rate of spontaneous resolutions, effectiveness of the sprint therapy and the timing of the surgery. So uh, Sugi Moto has classified the trigger thumb basically uh, about the presentation. There's a stage one when the patient has only the nodules, but there's no snapping. And the stage two when the, the patient has triggering while the active extension of the thumb and the stage three where, where there's no active extension, but there's a passive extension of thumb and triggering is there. And the stage four, which is most severe, that is the rigid type where the patient has a fixed flexion deformity. So this is this uh, uh, picture you can see that the patient has a flexion deformity at the IP joint. So there's a painless palpable nodule at the MP joint and the flexion of the thumb IP joint. So history and the physical examination is are, are the basically the pathognomic. There's no diagnostic testing is necess necessary. So for the treatment, there are the two options, the conservative treatment and the surgery. There are so uh, many people who, who prefers to put the splint and there's, uh, splinting has also the good result, but I, I think he, uh, there's other option that uh, giving the steroid and the splinting and the uh, third option is the surgery. Surgery can be, uh, there are two methods. One is the percutaneous A1 pulley release where people put the needle and release the A1 pulley. I think this is not advisable for the pediatric trigger thumb because the, there's presence of the radial distal nerve over the A1 pulley. And if you're going blindly by putting the needle and cutting the A1 pulley is not safe. So the gold standard for the pediatric trigger thumb is that the open A1 pulley release. So there are three important things which I would like to highlight in this talk. And if you remember these three things, probably you'll be safe during the surgery after uh, in, in doing the surgery of the pediatric trigger thumb. So first and foremost thing is that you should always, always identify the radial distal nerve. If you'll see that the radial distal nerve, which is because this radial distal nerve is crossing the A1 pulley. It goes from the ulna to the radial side over the A1 pulley. And if you miss this radial distal nerve, probably you will injure this and patient will have paresthesia. The second important thing is that always, always put incision on the, uh, always put incision on the uh, radial side or the center of the A1 pulley. Because if you go on the ulnar side, you can see this, if you go on the ulnar side, there's an oblique pulley is there. So if this oblique pulley, you will injure the oblique pulley, I think this is not good to injure. So always put incision on the radial side or the center part of the trigger th uh, A1 pulley. And the third thing which is most important is that always put uh, artery forceps inside un under the uh, tendon and pull it try to pull it out and once the if the tendon is coming out it means that if you are able to uh, lift the flexor uh, flexor pulses longest tendon it means the release is complete so here is the video of the surgery if you uh, if you see this patient has a clinically there's a there's passive extension of the ip joint is not possible there's a flexion attitude of the thumb and the, if you'll see on the, uh, at the base of the thumb, there is a palpable nodule at the base of the thumb and always put incision at the flexure crease of the 
come because this flexure crease correspond to the exact location, the exact anatomic site of the A1 pulley. So the transverse incision is, uh, we should always put transverse incision. And uh, after putting the transverse incision, always uh, dissect soft tissue in the longitudinal direction. So the incision over the flexure crease. And after that, this gradually soft tissue dissection actually soft tissue dissection in the longitudinal direction because the nerve is going longitudinally and if you uh, uh, dissect transversely you may injure the radial distal nerve so after that the first thing which you should find out is that the radial distal nerve and here is the radial distal nerve very clearly you can see the radial distal nerve which is over the a1 pulley so always, always protect this nerve because if you injure this nerve, patient will have paresthesia forever. So here is the A1 pulley now visible very clearly. And take a knife and cut over the A1 pulley. And once you put the incision over the A1, A1 pulley, you will see the white glistening structure that is the flexor pulsus longus tendon. So now you are able to see this flexor pulsus longus tendon, which is wide glistening structure. And always protect the radial distal nerve under the retractor or the forceps so that it should not come in the field of the, uh, where you are putting the knife, where you are cutting by the knife. And so once you release, make sure that it should complete release from the pro or to, towards the proximally and distally so that the complete A1 pulley release will be there. And you can see that the pulley is releasing completely. There's two edges of the pulley. And now you pass the uh, artery forcep or the scissor and try to pull it out and see that uh, if you are able to do this, it means that the release has complete. If you're not able to do this, it means that the release is not complete. And you, if you see that after release, the thumb is completely, you are passively, you can extend the thumb. And after the surgery, make sure that the, it should be complete release. There should not be any. Okay, so after the surgery, this is the radial distal nerve. And then you can put the sutures. And I, 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 uh, I will suggest that always put absorbable sutures because they are the kids. It's very difficult to do the dressings repeatedly and there is really uh, removing the sutures. So I always prefer to put 5-0 or the 6-0 rapid vicryl. These rapid vicryls, they dissolve early. So after the putting the sutures, you can put bulky dressings for the thumb, keeping uh, exposed the IP joint and tell patient to, I mean, that to passively extend or actively extend the IP joint. And after one week, you can remove the dressings. And I think uh, there's no need of further dressings because these, uh, these are absorbable sutures. They will absorb. There's no need of removing the sutures. And a uh, patient can use the thumb after one week. OK, I think I've done. Uh, I just want to take privilege of this forum to just tell you that the, please be the member of Indian Society of Surgery. And there's a lot of, you know, that the a lot of privileges of by becoming the member of the society because a lot of academics is going on in our society. We have weekly articles, we have recorded videos, we have the uh, recorded videos of the meetings. We have a lot of fellowship offers are there. So you can join and I request to the viewers who are seeing us. So please be the member of the Indian Society of Surgery of Hand. It will be quite useful for learning and as well as the profession also. Thank you, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.